out. Other Second Army troops passed burning wreckage en route to Eindhoven for the junction with men of the 1st Allied Airborne Army, who landed on the 17th. Eindhoven was captured soon after the first American paratroopers touched Dutch soil. All important bridges in the area also were secured. Entering Eindhoven, where they pick up some of the American troops, the British push on northward toward Nijmegen. They cover the 33 miles in five hours and reach the outskirts of Nijmegen at 1,200 hours on the 19th. The important bridge across the Vaal River was kept intact. A regiment of the U.S. 82nd Airborne Division crossed the river in assault boats to overcome the German defenders. Explosives were already in place for the destruction of the span. British engineers removed the charges. Seizure of the bridge without mishap constitutes an important victory, for without it, the Val River would have been a formidable obstacle. British armor passes over the bridge as the Allies continue the drive aimed at cutting around the enemy's defenses before northwestern Germany. Fighters and mosquitoes of the RAF Coastal Command crossed the channel to bomb and strafe Nazi merchant convoys carrying supplies for isolated German garrisons still holding out along the western coast of Europe. Some ships are attacked en route, others trapped inside the ports of beleaguered cities. Nazi merchantmen as land-sea contact is cut off by Allied bombings of enemy communications on the continent. Homeward-bound bullfighters attack a gas tank. Air Corps films of American 8th Air Force fighter bombers strafing ground targets. on the Calais garrison. RAF Lancasters, Halifaxes, and other heavies dropping thousands of tons of bombs score direct hits on Nazi strong points along the French coast port. This bombardment is preliminary to the truce arranged for the evacuation of civilians. Calais was captured on 1st October. A German pillbox and cross-channel gun position at La Tresorerie near the surrendered port of Boulogne. The 305 millimeter gun is part of the vast installations captured by the Canadians. For the city of Dover, silencing of these long-range weapons ends four years of German shelling. It is estimated that the total number of shells dropped on Dover was 2,226.
activities of Ordnance Combat Vehicle and artillery pools behind 1st and 3rd Army lines. At a collection depot and repair yard servicing the 1st Army, mechanics of an Ordnance Battalion reassemble a 155mm howitzer. Damaged vehicles of the 3rd Army are repaired by members of a heavy maintenance company. When tanks leave here, they are ready for combat down to ammo and rations. Repairing the transmission and final drive of a Sherman tank. An air-driven wrench is used to tighten transmission bolts on an M8 armored car. A replacement is necessary for a gun barrel pierced by a 40 millimeter projectile. Cutting three-quarter inch armor plate. Patches are needed for tank hulls punctured by APs. Welding a patch on a Sherman hull. Tank specialists reinstall a thrown track. A new radial engine is uncrated and installed in an armored vehicle. Back into action again with armored units moving into Germany. Seventh Army Infantry spearheads the drive above Belfort and the gap to southwestern Germany. On 23rd September, they advanced near the important highway junction of Remiremont, 14 miles south of Epinal. From Remiremont, the attack spreads out along highways leading to the Vosges Passes. Moving up to cross the Moselle River, engineer units working in the area helped to assure safe and rapid passage for the troops. Ammo is held high and dry as the men wade in. Guide ropes have been rigged up to help the infantrymen across. Assault boats are put into service as the order comes to rush the whole battalion across as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, trucks ford the river, coming back empty to pick up another load of troops. The advance continues. It's reported that snow faces units fighting their way toward the western slopes of the Vosges. To the north, on the 3rd Army front, a squadron of C-47s brings in winter clothing for American troops. The planes arrive at a point southwest of Nancy, some 30 miles behind the battlefront lines. The supply operation is under the supervision of the chief quartermaster for the European Theater of Operations. Heavy overcoats, wool socks, long underwear, knitted wool caps, mackinaws, are among the variety of winter necessities flown into the fighting areas. Quartermaster reports indicate that by mid-October, the American armies in Europe were 98% winterized. Fire bombs are introduced during the fighting for Mets in the 3rd Army sector. The incendiaries are dropped by P-47s, which on 28th September dive bomb Fort Jean d'Arc, setting huge fires. The many German forts defending Mets have been stubborn targets for Allied artillery. Therefore, the fire bombs serve as valuable aid for the ground troops. <laughs> 